All right, so this is part two of the video making a small ring box or treasure box, gift box, call it what you will. Uh, in this part, we'll be adding a hinge. Uh, print in place is our goal, meaning that when it comes off the print platform, it will already be working. So, because these are the same height, I'll be able to print them with a hinge centered right here, uh, and it'll work just fine. If the lids were a different height, it would be tricky. I'd have to put some kind of support under this lid if it were shorter than the body of the box. Uh, from previous experience working with hinges, I know that the hinge needs to center right around this midline here, uh, and that's where we'll be building it. So I'm going to get this guy out of the way for a while now. Uh, and we're going to start by putting the two hinge backs on here. So grab a roof, drag it out. It always seems to come out facing the wrong way. And we're going to rotate it around until it's oriented with its backside to this. Uh, now, I'm going to build it on the box. So I hit W to put a well, uh, work plane there. And then I hit D to drop it to that work plane. Uh, I want it raised up a bit. And I'm going to shrink this thing down. Let's make it 6 deep by... Oh, uh, what do we want? Six tall and five wide. Now, again, I want this thing over here a little higher up. Uh, I made this six deep by six high. It gives me a 45 degree angle and allows me to build on top of that. What I'm aiming for is a five millimeter hinge axle. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is put a work plane on top of it and drag out a little box. It's going to be five wide and five deep and 2.5 tall. I need to center that over here. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to use the handles. So I select both, hit L, and move it into position and get rid of my work plane. Then I can put a new work plane on top of there and drag out one of these rounded roofs. Always comes out in the wrong way. orientation. Just like before, it's going to be five wide, five deep, and in this case, it's going to be 2.5 tall. Got to square it up over the box. Hit L, align them these dimensions and that's the base of my axle for the hinge. Let's group these guys together. I'm going to use this a whole lot in making this. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and drag off one for reference later on. Now looking at this from the right side this hinge needs to be centered on the height of that lid there. So I need to move it up one I think. Hit control, move the up arrow, and I think it will be centered there now. Okay. Now, in order to make the other side of the hinge, let's move this lid back closer into approximation. And grab that hinge. Hit F to focus on it. Hit control D to duplicate it. And move it out. Let's flip it around by hitting M to mirror it. And I'm going to make sure it's right on the surface by hitting W, dropping work plane, hitting D to drop it. So now I know it's perfectly aligned with the surface of the roof. Let's move it over some. To right there. Now, when I move these, oops, sorry, into place, you can see that they line up perfectly. And the pin that I put from the first hinge body to the second uh, we'll go through its center. Move these back out of the way for right now. <coughs> Let's make that pin. Put a work plane on the inside of the hinge, drop a cone onto it, and change the base radius to 2, the top radius to 1, and the height to 2. There's my pin. 
I need to switch my snap grid down here to 0.5 to allow me to move this thing where I want it until it's centered on the circle. That actually looks pretty good there. Good. Okay. Get rid of my work plane. And now this is going to also be the hole that goes into the other side of the hinge. So I'm going to duplicate it, make it a hole with H, and move it over one millimeter. Now I can take the lid back into position. <coughs> oh, I need to move this in. I only want the lid hinge half a millimeter separated from the main body hinge. Okay, so let's group these hinge parts from the main body together. And then let's move them away a bit. What I could do is I could put a hole on one side of the hinge, but I want to make a really strong hinge, so I'm going to duplicate that hole. Let's make this transparent so you can see what I'm doing here. Du so you can see how the hole cuts into it. I haven't yet grouped them, so it's not really part of it yet. I'm going to Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to hit M to mirror it, and then this arrow to flip it. Okay, so now I've got indentations on both sides of my hinge. I can move the whole thing forward again to where it lines up perfectly with the main body. I'm going to grab the main body's hinge, hit Control D to duplicate it, hit M to mirror it, and we're going to move it over into position here. Now depending on your printer you may find that this is too tight of a difference between these two and that they fuse together when you're printing, in which case you would want to move it out a bit, making a slightly less secure hinge, but uh, it still would not be able to fall out of that. But I think I can get away with that on my printer the way it's currently configured, so we're going to keep it at that tight of a tolerance. Now, I've got one hinge. Let's make another one over here. Grab all of those three, hit Control D, and let's just move them over. And that one's one millimeter from the end there. Let's move this one one millimeter from the end for uniformity. And now, now for the moment of truth. Uh, let's group the parts of the body together that belong together. I'm holding on shift while I click all the four parts of the hinge on the main body. Then I'm going to do the same for the roof. I'm going to hold on shift while I click the two hinge inserts and the main lid. Hit control G to group them. And now this would print perfectly. You see there's no problems with this. There's no overhangs that are more than 45 degrees. What I don't know yet is if I've aligned the hinges right. So let's just slide it into position as it should be when it's fully formed and see if I've done the hinges right. And you'll see I'm using the keyboard to move things around. I find it much more exacting. Remember, you can hold control and the arrows to go up and down. And it's looking pretty good. I think the hinge is going to work just fine. Somehow I'm off by about a tenth of a millimeter. So I'm going to switch my snap grid to a tenth of a millimeter and move things down. Turns out it was three tenths of a millimeter. I'm going to make the base transparent so I can make sure the pins line up. Oh, just barely off but perfect. Okay, so it lines up when it's assembled, it'll line up when it's printed uh, with the lid open, and we should have a print-in-place working hinge system. So, well, I don't need that anymore. Actually, let's keep that. Let's do one more uh, little piece here, and let's add a lock to our chest. So we take this uh, hinge part we used before and select the lid, align it to the middle. Let's flip it so it's facing. And let's put a work plane on there and hit D to drop it. Okay, now just as before, I'm going to want this piece to be lined up 
on that split between the lid and the base. I'm going to hit control and move it up. That's close enough. I didn't really mean to stay in the 0.1 millimeter range. And let's put a hole in it. Drop a work plane on the side. Drop a hollow cylinder in. Let's make it 3x3. Three three. Whoops. 33 is not what I wanted. 3 is what I wanted. And let's move it into position. Not quite right. Looks like it's half a millimeter low. Let's try it now. That looks centered. Okay. So let's move this into the latch. Get rid of my work plane and group these two. Okay. Great. I love it. Control D to duplicate it. Move it out to the side. Hit M to flip it and move it up until the holes align. And we're off on my tenth of a millimeter again. Okay. Good. And grab this, control D, slide it over to the side. Okay, so when it prints, we will have a latch that will print with it well. If you want to put something through there, a little, I don't know, travel lock or something. And it will hold it closed. Of course, anyone who wants to steal it, we just take a hammer to it and open it. But let's move these over there to the print configuration so you can see how they look. And let's change the colors so they're a little more distinct. And make sure I got these aligned properly. If you don't have them aligned when you print, then you'll fuse them together for sure. Okay, there it is. Uh, that would print well, without any problems, uh, into a hinged box with a little lock. Uh, kind of cute. Okay, that's as far as we'll take it for this session. Thank you.